Hello everyone, I'm Irene, and welcome to the Open Eula OECA course. Today's course follows on from the previous episode as we look at physical storage and logical volumes, physical volumes, and volume groups. This course covers the basic concepts, principles, advantages, architecture, and management modes of logical volumes, physical volumes, and volume groups. First up, logical volumes. Created on the volume group, a logical volume is a logical device for end users. With flexible capacity, a logical volume can be expanded, reduced, or formatted into different file systems and can be directly used after being mounted. On Linux, logical volume management is a logical layer above disks and the partitions and below the file systems. A logical volume is a large extended partition or a volume group comprising multiple disk partitions or block devices, which are physical volumes. A volume group must contain at least one physical volume. Physical volumes can be located in different disk partitions and of different sizes. The extended partition cannot be used directly and a logical volume can only be used after it is divided. Logical volumes have a lot of benefits, including the flexible capacity, scalable storage pools, online data reallocation, easy device naming, disk striping, volume mirroring, and volume snapshots. This screen shows the overall structure and the layers from bottom to top. The layers include physical disks, physical partitions, physical volumes, volume groups, and logical volumes. Storage system management includes operations like creation, capacity extension, and reduction, and deletion, among others. Different commands are involved based on different layers. Now let's focus on the physical volume layer. The pvcreate command is used to create a physical volume using a physical disk or disk partition. The command syntax, common options, and examples are listed here in this slide. You can run the PV display command as the root user to query information about a physical volume, such as a physical volume name and size, the name of the volume group to which the physical volume belongs, physical extent size, total number of physical extents, number of available physical extents, number of allocated physical extents, and UUIDs. Here are the command syntax, comma options, and example. Alternatively, you can run the pvscan and pvs commands to find the general information about a physical volume. To modify the attributes of a physical volume, run the pvchange command as the root user. If you want to modify physical volumes in a batch, just to specify multiple devices in the pv name. The PV remove command is used to delete a physical volume. You can also delete physical volumes in batches by specifying multiple device names. The syntax, comma options, and example of the commands are displayed in the slide. Next, let's move on to the layer of volume groups, which is also the upper layer of physical volumes in addition to creating, viewing, modifying, and deleting a volume group, you can expand or compress a volume group's capacity. The vgcreate command is used to create a volume group. A volume group combines multiple physical volumes into a whole part, showing the details of the underlying physical volumes. This ensures that you don't need to consider the specific information of physical volumes when creating a logical volume on the volume group. The command syntax, comma options, and example are listed here. To view volume group information, run the VG display command as the root user. By setting the option, you can query the information about a specified volume group or all volume groups. Here are the specific command syntax, comma options, and example. To change the attributes of the volume group, or activate or deactivate a volume group, run the vgchange command as the root user. See left for
for its details. Next, let's discuss how to extend and reduce volume group capacity. Run the vgextend command as the root user to dynamically extend a volume group, which increases the capacity of the group by adding physical volumes to the group. With the option in this command syntax, you can determine to use the debug or test mode. Remember to specify the name of the volume group to be extended as the name of the physical volume to be added to the group. The specific command syntax, comma options, and example are also listed here. To reduce capacity, use the vgreduce command that reduces the capacity of a volume group by deleting physical volumes from the group. Note that the last remaining physical volume in the group cannot be deleted. You can specify the physical vo volume to be deleted or determine to delete all the lost physical volumes from the volume group to restore the group. To delete a specified physical volume, specify the name of the volume group, as well as the name of the physical volume to be deleted from the group. You can find more details in the slide on the left. To delete a volume group, use vgremove command. See on the screen for the details and example. OK, let's turn our attention to logical volumes at the upper layer. The operations include creation, view, resizing, capacity extension, and reduction, and deletion of logical volumes. Run the lvcreate command as the root user to create a logical volume. The option of this command can specify the size and the name of the logical volume or create a snapshot. The details are listed here in a slide. Once you create a logical volume, you can run the LV display command as the root user to view the logical volume information, which includes the logical volume size, read write status, and snapshot information. This command can also be used to display the mapping from logical extent to physical extent. You can choose to specify the device file corresponding to the logical volume whose attributes are to be displayed, or the attributes of all logical volumes. Note that the device files corresponding to the logical volumes are stored in the volume group directory. OK, the specific command syntax, comma options, and example are listed here. To adjust the logical volume size, that is to increase or reduce the volume capacity, run the LV resize command as the root user. Actually, this command acts like a combination of capacity extension and reduction. Exercise caution when running this LV resize command, because data may be lost during resizing. Here are the specific command syntax, comma options, and example. In addition to LV resize, you can also run LV extend command to dynamically extend the logical volume capacity online without interrupting application access to logical volumes. Confirm the volume group space is sufficient, then run command to expand the capacity and adjust the size of the file system. Similar to LV resize, the LV extend command can also be used to determine whether to forcefully perform resizing. The command syntax, comma options, and example are listed here on the left. You can also run LV reduce to reduce the space occupied by a logical volume, but in doing so, this removes the existing data on the logical volume. So to perform this operation, first determine the target size after reduction and ensure that the target logical volume size can cover all the original data. Then, unmount the file system and perform a forceful check. And finally, shrink the file system and reduce the size of the logical volume. Here, the details of the LV reduce command are displayed in this slide. The LV remove command is used to delete a logical volume. This operation will not work if a logical volume has been loaded by running the mount command. And in this case, you can only delete it after running the unmount command. 
The specific command syntax, comma options, and example are listed here. That's all for this course. We hope you found today's discussion on commands for disk management enlightening. If you did, feel free to join in our community discussions and remember to follow us on our socials. See you in the next course and thank you for watching.